Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Everything I hear him saying is truth. I know it. The truth in his word literally comes from the Bible. The more you watch it, the more you realize it is the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I've been sharing some things with you that are just super important in my life. This is the foundation of my life. I've been teaching on eternal life. And if you haven't watched the two previous programs this week, you may think, well, that's talking about eternity, about heaven and living forever in heaven. No, the, I've spent the first two days showing you that eternal life is not talking about living forever. Did you know everybody lives forever? Some people may think, well, that's not true. Well, yes, it is. There is no such thing as when a person dies, they cease to exist. It's just that their physical body dies, but their soul and their spirit either go to be with the Lord or they go to hell. But every person who has ever breathed on this planet is still alive. They just aren't alive in their physical body. There is no one who dies. Everybody lives forever. Now, it is true that some get to live forever in the blessings of heaven and others live forever in the curses of hell. And so there is a hell to gain and a, I mean, it's hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And so I agree with that, but everybody lives forever. So some people think, well, then it's just talking about a quality of life that we will live forever in the presence of God. But no, I've shown you a lot of scriptures. I, I think I used six scriptures in the book of John alone that talked about if you believe on him, you now have everlasting life. And Jesus even said in John chapter 10, verse 10, that he came to give us life, everlasting life, and life more abundantly. And it's not reserved for heaven, it's for right now. So this is the point that I've been making out of John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. There's not a period there. It goes on to say, but have everlasting life. The goal of salvation is everlasting life. And again, everlasting life isn't just living forever. It's talking about a quality of life, specifically a personal relationship with Jesus. Let me turn over and use this verse. I quoted this yesterday, but John 17, 3, this is Jesus speaking a prayer the night before he was arrested and then crucified. And Jesus said, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So eternal life is knowing God. And some people think, well, that's disappointing. I know God, and yet, man, I'm still sick. I'm poor. I'm miserable. I need all kinds of help. I need more than just knowing God. The Bible, when it uses the term know, is talking about intimacy. Adam knew his wife Eve and that she conceived. It's talking about an intimacy that produces a birth of a child in the physical. And in the spiritual realm, this is saying that the reason that Jesus died is to give us eternal life or to give us this intimacy with God. And brothers and sisters, there are so many people that just don't have this. They may possess salvation. They may have their sins forgiven. If they die, they aren't going to go to hell. They're going to go to heaven. But there are so many people. There are people watching this program right now that you know God in the sense that you know you're saved. You don't doubt that. If the Lord was to come back, you'd be caught up. If we die before he comes back, you would go to heaven. I am not questioning that. But there are so many of you that you just don't know God in an intimate way. And I know this because I have people come to me all of the time who are Christians, but man, they are just struggling. And I mean, they don't know God in an intimate, close, personal way. And this is not the way that God intended it to be. So I can say it this way, that if all you did was come to Jesus to get your sins forgiven, and if you did get them forgiven, and if you have an assurance that you're going to heaven, but if you don't have an intimate relationship with God to where, man, He speaks to you and you know Him, then you're missing the main point of salvation. That will offend a lot of people because somehow or another, the church has changed the message about it's not about knowing God. It's about just getting your sins forgiven and going to heaven. 
But did you know this is one of the reasons that the early first century church made such a huge impact? Did you know 30 years after the crucifixion of Jesus, I read a statement that in Alexand Alexandria in Egypt, that it was over 50% Christian in Egypt. I mean, the known world, the Roman world had basically been evangelized in 30 years and people were turning to the Lord in mass. And you know, one of the reasons is because they weren't preaching, get your sins forgiven so you can go to heaven. They were preaching, get your sins forgiven so that you can have this intimate relationship with God. They had a relationship with God that made a difference. You know, I was actually in Vietnam conducting a Bible study, and this wasn't too long after I got really turned on to the Lord, so I didn't know a whole bunch, but man, I was sure zealous. And I was in love with God, and God was speaking to me, and so I was holding this Bible study, and I had about six or seven people in this Bible study, and a guy came and stood at the back. I was using the chapel, and a guy came and stood at the back for a few minutes, and then he walked in, sat down, and he started asking me questions. And I didn't know the answers to his questions. And then he just turned on me, and it turned out he was an atheist. And he didn't believe that there was a God. And he came in there just to argue with me, and he brought up these questions that I couldn't answer. And he was a Princeton graduate. He was an intellectual, which I am not. And he out-argued me. And after a few minutes, he just stood up and he said, there is no God, you're a fool. And he said, who's going with me? And all six of the guys that were there for this Bible study left with the atheist. He was more convincing than I was. And so I was just sitting there thinking, God, that did not go well. What could I have done differently? And I was praying and asking God, you know, how could I represent you better? And this guy walks back in. After about 15 minutes or so, he walked back in and he sat down. There was other people in there. It was a library type thing. And when finally everybody left and it was just him and me, he came over and he says, I want what you have. And I was just shocked. I said, you do? I said, why? He said, you made a fool out of me. You ruined my Bible study. You took the people with you. Why do you want what I have? And he said, I'm a Princeton graduate. He says, I'm an intellectual. My whole life is based on, you know, my ability to argue and to think. And he said, I out-talked you. He says, I made a fool of you. He says, if somebody had done that to me, I'd commit suicide. He says, my whole life is just, it's all intellectual. It's all logic. And he says, but you have something that goes beyond that. He said, I was sitting there criticizing you and you were saying, I don't know the answer to that, but I know God is real because I talked to him because he's here with me. He, I, I know him. And he says, I want to know God like that. See, that's what the first century church had. They didn't just have a doctrine. You know, you can come have the Mormons knock on your door and they got a doctrine and the Jehovah Witnesses and you can have the Buddhists and the Muslims and all of these people, they've all got a doctrine. But true born again people have a relationship with God and that's what caused Christianity to just spread like wildfire in the first centuries because they knew God on a personal level. You know, I've read Fox's good Book of Martyrs. I've read a number of different books on this. And did you know during Damocletian's uh, reign, uh, right around 300 A.D. or two, end of 200s to 300 A.D., I, I read a story about uh, a woman who was pregnant and uh, the Romans would not torture a pregnant woman. And so this woman was pregnant and they were going to kill her because she was a Christian and she was with all of these other friends, but they were going to wait until she delivered this child and then they would torture her. And she was locked up with all these other people and they were her brothers and sisters and uh, they wanted to, uh, she wanted to die with them. And so she actually prayed and they laid hands on her and she gave birth, I think in the end of the seventh month or the first or the eighth month of her pregnancy. And she gave the baby to a guard and asked him to take care of it. And he was so touched by this that he raised that child as if it was on. And she specifically prayed for an early delivery so that she would have the privilege of going out and dying with her friends. How many people would do something like that today? But see, she had a relationship with God. She wasn't afraid of death. 
THERE ARE LITERALLY REPORTS THAT ONE OF THE REASONS THAT THEY QUIT THE, uh, YOU KNOW, THE PERSECUTION OF THE CHRISTIANS IN THE CIRCUS MAXIMUS WAS BECAUSE EVERY TIME THEY BURNT SOMEBODY AT THE STAKE, EVERY TIME THEY THREW THEM TO THE LIONS, THESE PEOPLE WOULD JUST GLORIFY GOD. THEY WOULD SING. MATTER OF FACT, THERE'S AN ACTUAL ACCOUNT OF NERO STICKING HIS FINGERS IN HIS EARS AND SAYING, WHY MUST THESE CHRISTIANS SING AS THEY DIE? AND THEY EXPRESSED SO MUCH PEACE AND SO MUCH JOY AS THEY WERE BEING TORN LIMB FROM LIMB. DID YOU KNOW WHEN THEY BURNT YOU AT THE STAKE, THEY WOULD LITERALLY SHARPEN A STAKE AND RAM IT UP THROUGH YOU AND IMPALE YOU AND PUT YOU ON A STAKE. AND YET THESE PEOPLE WERE SINGING AND WORSHIPPING THE LORD. AND THERE ARE ACTUAL ACCOUNTS OF PEOPLE, ROMANS, JUMPING OUT OF THE STANDS AND RUNNING OUT THERE TO ASK THAT THEY COULD HAVE THAT KIND OF A RELATIONSHIP. THEY WANTED SOMETHING THAT WAS SO REAL THAT EVEN IF IT COST THEM THEIR LIFE, THEY WERE WILLING TO GIVE UP EVERYTHING THEY HAD FOR A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, NOT A DOCTRINE. AND TODAY, SO MUCH OF WHAT'S BEING PREACHED IN THE NAME OF THE LORD IS NOT TRUE CHRISTIANITY. IT'S NOT TRUE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. IT'S A DOCTRINE. THE MUSLIMS HAVE A DOCTRINE. THE BUDDHISTS HAVE A DOCTRINE. The, the, JEHOVAH WITNESS, ALL OF THEM HAVE A DOCTRINE, BUT THEY DON'T POSSESS TRUE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. AND SAD TO SAY, SO MANY PEOPLE WHO ARE QUOTE, UNQUOTE, CHRISTIANS DON'T POSSESS A TRUE RELATIONSHIP. SOME POSSESS IT TO THE DEGREE THAT IF THEY WERE TO DIE, THEY'D GO TO HEAVEN. YES, I'LL ADMIT THAT, BUT THERE ARE VERY FEW CHRISTIANS THAT ARE JUST LITERALLY IN COMMUNION WITH GOD TO WHERE HE IS THEIR BEST FRIEND, THEY LOVE HIM MORE THAN THEY LOVE THEIR LIFE, WHERE THEY ARE ENJOYING THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD. AND I'M TELLING YOU, THAT'S NOT THE WAY THAT GOD INTENDED IT TO BE. THIS IS WHAT JOHN 3, 16 IS SAYING. THE REASON JESUS DIED WAS TO REMOVE THIS BARRIER OF SIN SO THAT WE WOULDN'T PERISH. YES, THAT'S TRUE, AND THAT'S WONDERFUL, BUT IT'S MUCH MORE THAN THAT. IT WAS SO THAT WE COULD HAVE THIS INTIMACY WITH GOD. AND THERE ARE VERY FEW CHRISTIANS THAT REALLY HAVE THAT. I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS RIGHT NOW THAT YOU SAY, MAN, THIS IS CONVICTING ME. YOU KNOW YOU'RE BORN AGAIN. YOU KNOW YOU'D GO TO HEAVEN. BUT MAN, YOU JUST DON'T SEEM TO HAVE THAT INTIMACY. YOU DON'T HAVE WHAT YOU READ IN THE BIBLE ABOUT PEOPLE, HOW THEY WERE ABLE TO STAND AGAINST ALL THESE THINGS. YOU DON'T HAVE THAT. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? YOU CAN. ONE OF THE FIRST STEPS IN HAVING THIS INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD IS JUST HEARING FROM THE WORD OF GOD, THE SCRIPTURES THAT I'VE BEEN SHARING, THAT THIS IS WHAT GOD WILLS FOR YOU, THAT THIS IS EVEN AVAILABLE. YOU KNOW, IF YOU DON'T HEAR, THE BIBLE SAYS FAITH COMES BY HEARING, HEARING BY THE WORD OF GOD, ROMANS 10, 17. AND IF YOU NEVER HEAR ANYBODY PREACH THIS AS AN OBTAINABLE GOAL, AS ACTUALLY GOD'S WILL FOR YOUR LIFE, WELL, THEN YOU WON'T HAVE FAITH FOR IT. AND SAD TO SAY, THE CHURCH, FOR WHATEVER THE REASON IS, HAS CHANGED THE MESSAGE FROM INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. GET BORN AGAIN SO THAT YOU CAN KNOW GOD, SO THAT YOU CAN HAVE THIS GOD-SHAPED VACUUM ON THE INSIDE OF YOU FILLED, AND SO THAT YOU CAN HAVE JOY UNSPEAKABLE AND FULL OF GLORY AND ALL OF THESE THINGS. INSTEAD OF PREACHING THAT, IT'S GET SAVED SO YOU WON'T GO TO HELL. AND YOU KNOW, IF THAT'S THE GOAL, IF THAT'S WHAT PEOPLE ARE COMING TO THE LORD FOR, IS SO THAT THEY CAN GET SAVED AND THEY WON'T GO TO HELL, THEN ONCE THEY GET SAVED AND ONCE THEY GET AN ASSURANCE THAT THEY'RE GOING TO HEAVEN, WHAT'S THE PURPOSE IN GOING TO CHURCH? <laughs> I'M BEING KIND OF THE DEVIL'S ADVOCATE HERE. I'M NOT SAYING THAT THAT'S THE WAY IT SHOULD BE, BUT I'M SAYING PEOPLE COULD REASON THAT WAY. I'VE GOT IT. I KNOW I'M GOING TO HEAVEN. WHY GO TO CHURCH? WHY STUDY THE WORD? WHY DO ANYTHING? BECAUSE AFTER ALL, I GOT MY TICKET TO HEAVEN. IF THAT'S WHAT YOU'RE PREACHING AS THE GOAL OF SALVATION IS JUST TO GET YOUR INSURANCE POLICY SO THAT YOU WON'T BURN IN HELL, AND IF THAT'S WHAT YOU'RE PREACHING, THEN ONCE PEOPLE GET IT, WHY GO ANY FURTHER WITH THE LORD? AND THIS IS WHY IN MOST CHURCHES IT'S LIKE PULLING TEETH TO TRY AND GET PEOPLE TO COME ON A REGULAR BASIS AND TO SERVE AND TO GET IN AND HELP YOU REACH OUT TO OTHER PEOPLE IS BECAUSE THE GOAL OF SALVATION WAS GETTING THEIR SINS FORGIVEN. IT WASN'T ABOUT KNOWING GOD AND MAKING HIM KNOWN TO OTHER PEOPLE. AND SEE, IF, you, if THAT'S WHAT YOU'RE PREACHING, THEN YOU GET WHAT YOU PREACH. WE NEED TO GO TO PREACHING THAT THE GOAL OF SALVATION 
isn't to get your sins forgiven. It's necessary to get your sins forgiven. It's a barrier that stands between you and intimate relationship with God. So yes, that is a part of it. I am not saying that forgiveness of sins is not a part of salvation, but it's not the true goal of salvation. Why do you get your sins forgiven? So you can just go to heaven? No, it's so that you can know God. When your sins are forgiven, all of the barriers that were between you and God are gone. It's like, you know, in the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the uh, Covenant was and the cherubims were there to protect it. And if anybody went into that Holy of Holies, they were struck dead. There was only one person allowed to go in one time a year. That was a high priest. That symbolized Jesus, and he had to offer all of the sacrifices so that he could be pure and holy. And if anything happened, Josephus, one of the first century historians, wrote that they actually put a rope around a guy's ankle and let it trail out into the holy place because if he entered into the Holy of Holies and if he hadn't done everything perfect, he would be struck dead, and they couldn't go in and get him. So they kept this rope around his ankle to drag him out. BUT WHEN JESUS, THE TRUE HIGH PRIEST, GAVE HIS LIFE AND DIED FOR OUR SINS, THE VEIL OF THE TEMPLE THAT SEPARATED THE HOLY OF HOLIES WHERE GOD DWELT FROM THE HOLY PLACE WHERE THE PRIEST uh, MINISTERED, IT WAS RENTED TO FROM THE TOP TO THE BOTTOM, SIGNIFYING THAT THE WAY TO GOD WAS REMOVED. THAT VEIL WAS LIKE THE BODY OF JESUS THAT HAD TO BE SHED, HAD TO BE BROKEN FOR THE FORGIVENESS OF OUR SINS. AND ONCE THAT HAPPENED, THIS SEPARATION IS GONE. AND SO OVER IN THE BOOK OF HEBREWS, I'M NOT SURE I CAN QUOTE ALL OF THIS, SO LET ME JUST TURN OVER AND READ THIS TO YOU OUT OF HEBREWS IN CHAPTER 10, AND IT SAYS uh, IN VERSE 19, HAVING THEREFORE, BRETHREN, BOLDNESS TO ENTER INTO THE HOLIEST BY THE BLOOD OF JESUS, BY A NEW AND LIVING WAY WHICH HE HATH CONSECRATED FOR US THROUGH THE VEIL, THAT IS TO SAY HIS FLESH, AND HAVING A HIGH PRIEST OVER THE HOUSE OF GOD, LET US DRAW NEAR WITH A TRUE HEART IN FULL ASSURANCE OF FAITH, HAVING OUR HEARTS SPRINKLED FROM AN EVIL CONSCIENCE AND OUR BODIES WASHED WITH PURE WATER. SEE, THAT'S WHAT THIS IS ALL TALKING ABOUT, ALL THAT SYMBOLISM. NOW THAT JESUS HAS DIED, NOW THAT THE VEIL IS RENT TO HIS BODY HAS BEEN TORN FOR US, there, THE SEPARATION BETWEEN GOD AND MAN IS GONE SO THAT WE CAN ENTER INTO THE VERY HOLY OF HOLIES, INTO THE VERY PRESENCE OF GOD, AND WE CAN DWELL IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD. AND YOU CAN HAVE A PEACE THAT PASSES UNDERSTANDING. YOU CAN KNOW GOD. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT'S GOING ON IN THIS WORLD. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT'S GOING ON IN YOUR BODY, WHAT'S GOING ON IN YOUR BUSINESS, WHAT'S GOING ON IN YOUR MARRIAGE. YOU CAN BE IN THE VERY PRESENCE OF GOD. THAT'S WHAT SALVATION IS ALL ABOUT. AND IT WILL GO TO ANOTHER LEVEL WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN, YES, BUT IT'S NOT RESERVED FOR HEAVEN. YOU CAN EXPERIENCE THIS ETERNAL LIFE NOW. THAT SHOULD BE THE MESSAGE. AND IF WE WERE PREACHING THAT MESSAGE, I GUARANTEE YOU, PEOPLE LIKE THIS ATHEIST WOULD BE COMING IN AND COMING TO THE LORD BECAUSE ALL THEY'VE GOT IS AN ARGUMENT. THEY DON'T HAVE AN EXPERIENCE. ALL OF THESE OTHER RELIGIONS THAT HAVE DOCTRINES AND DOGMAS AND CREEDS, BUT THEY DON'T HAVE A PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP, MAN, THEY WOULD BE COMING TO US IN DROVES. BUT SAD TO SAY, THERE'S PEOPLE WHO ARE CHRISTIANS WHO ARE BORN AGAIN, BUT THEY'VE NEVER ENTERED INTO THAT PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. THAT'S NOT THE GOAL THAT WE ARE PRESENTING IN SALVATION AND BECAUSE OF IT. WE GOT A LOT OF PEOPLE WHO HAVE GONE THROUGH THE MOTIONS. THEY'VE PRAYED TO MAKE JESUS THEIR LORD, AND MANY OF THEM ARE PROBABLY TRULY BORN AGAIN. BUT IF THEY WOULD BE ARRESTED FOR BEING A CHRISTIAN, THERE WOULDN'T BE ENOUGH EVIDENCE TO CONVICT THEM. THEY DON'T HAVE JOY. THEY DON'T HAVE PEACE. THEY DON'T HAVE HEALING. THEY DON'T HAVE PROSPERITY. THEY DON'T HAVE VISION. THEY CAN'T HEAR FROM GOD. THERE IS VERY LITTLE DIFFERENCE BETWEEN THEM AND THEIR UNSAVED NEIGHBOR EXCEPT THE FUTURE, WHAT THEY'RE BELIEVING FOR WHEN WE ALL DIE AND GO TO HEAVEN. BUT I'M TELLING YOU, THAT IS NOT THE WAY IT WAS IN THE FIRST CENTURY. THOSE PEOPLE KNEW GOD. THEY KNEW GOD. THERE IS ACTUALLY A REPORT THAT I READ, AND I THINK IT WAS FOX'S BOOK OF MARTYRS, AND THE CHRISTIANS WOULD LITERALLY FIGHT TO SEE WHO GOT THE HONOR OF GOING OUT AND DYING IN THE CIRCUS MAXIMUS. I READ ABOUT HOW THEY HAD PUT PEOPLE IN NETS, AND THEY'D TIE THEM UP IN A NETS, AND THEY'D TURN BULLS LOOSE, AND THESE BULLS WOULD JUST GORE THEM AND BEAT THEM TO DEATH AND ALL OF THE OTHER THINGS, AND YET THEY KNEW GOD SO MUCH THAT THEY CONSIDERED IT AN HONOR TO DIE THE WAY THAT JESUS DIED. Uh, PETER WAS CRUCIFIED, BUT HE DIDN'T FEEL WORTHY TO BE CRUCIFIED THE WAY THAT JESUS WAS, SO HE ASKED IF HE COULD BE CRUCIFIED UPSIDE DOWN. 
He didn't even feel worthy, but he was honored to die the way that Jesus did. I'm telling you what, there's not very many Christians today who know God like that. Now, I'm not saying that we should go out and pray for martyrdom. Man, it's like Patton said, you know, he, he didn't want his people to die for their country. He wanted the other people to, to die for their country. He wanted his soldiers to live. I believe that, yes, we need to live, but we need to have that devotion and that degree of a commitment that we love God more than we love our own life. And see, when you come into this intimate relationship with God that I've been talking about, what the Bible calls eternal life, when you begin to experience that, man, things become more important to you than yourself. Most Christians are all wrapped up in themselves and they make a very small package. Most Christians are just totally terrified. But, you know, Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So they'd come and they say, you quit preaching the gospel or we'll kill you. I could just see Paul reaching up and hugging him, saying, oh, man, that would be awesome. I'd get to see Jesus. And they say, well, then we'll lock you in jail. And so he just goes to praising God at midnight and an earthquake comes and he gets all of the prisoners and the jailer born again. And they say, well, then we'll let you go. And he says, fine. And he goes out and just preaches the gospel. Did you know when you love God more than you love yourself, how do you intimidate a dead person? If that person has died to themselves and loves God more than they love themselves, Man, you just can't intimidate them. That's the way that Paul was. That's the way the apostles were. And that's the way that you can be if you enter into more than just getting your sins forgiven and you recognize that God wants to know you personally. God loves you. He doesn't just love what you can do for Him. He loves you. You know, I married my wife and I asked Jamie, I said, I want you to spend the rest of your life with me. I wanted Jamie. I didn't want what she could do for me. Jamie is an excellent cook. She cleans the house. Everything in our house is just perfect. Everything's in order. Uh, she keeps her spices alphabetized. I mean, she's, she's an organization freak, and I love it, and it ministers to me. But if she ever got to where she was more concerned about that house and doing things for me, than she was about me, the very things that are now a blessing to me right now would become something that I hate because she would love them more than me. And see, this is the way God was. He told us to offer sacrifices in the Old Testament, but he got so sick and tired of them just going through the motions, but their heart wasn't right, that finally he says, away with your sacrifices. I'm sick of them. They're a stink in my nostril. These were good things, things that he commanded them to do, but they had substituted things for knowing Him, for a relationship with Him. Don't make your life like that. You may be going through all of the motions and you may be straight as a gun barrel, but twice as empty. You need to have a personal relationship with God. That is the purpose of salvation. It'll not only bless other people, but I guarantee you, it'll bring your life in this life, not just the one to come, but in this life, it'll bring you to a brand new level. It'll change your relationship with God. I've got a lot more to say about this, but I'm going to have to continue tomorrow. I do have a little booklet on this that I wrote. It's just a brief summary, but it is powerful, and I believe it would really, really help you. We also have DVDs, CDs, and a USB that will have the audio and video on it. And I promise you, you need to get this. You need to hear this more than once. You need to hear it in its entirety. And you also need to share this with other people. This would be a great way to just put this out at your business or someplace. Uh, you could use it like a track. So call or write today. I want to thank you for watching the program today. And I believe that God is touching your life, that God is changing people's lives. And you know, I have people come up to me at my meetings all of the time and they just tell me about how that the truth has set them free. I've heard this thousands of times, and often I'll ask them, I said, have you ever written in? Have you ever contacted us? And I mean, it's often that people will say no. They've been listening for years, and yet they've never responded. You know, the scripture says that if you've been blessed spiritually to give back financially, and right now we are in a building process uh, for our Bible college that is gonna cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build out everything to make this so that if a person comes to Karis Bible College, they won't miss out on anything they could get at a secular college. And plus, they'll get all of the spiritual truth that will set them free. 
And so we've got a huge building program going. If you would go to our website, awmi.net slash campus, you could see an artist rendering and a video where you actually see these buildings, go inside of them and look around. It's gonna be awesome. And we are training up champions for Christ that are making a difference, but we need a lot of help in order to get it done. So if you're one of those that's received and yet you've never become a part and help us reach out to somebody else, I'd just like to encourage you to pray about it and join with us because in the same way that God has been touching you and helping you, there are so many more people we could reach if we train up these leaders. So please check it out. Go to awmi.net slash campus and then I encourage you to pray about it. Join with us, help us to get the gospel out that is the only power that's gonna change this world. I promise you, you'll never regret it. You know, on today's program, I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receiving salvation and speaking in tongues. And if you haven't received either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would like to encourage you to please call our helpline. We have that number right there on the screen and we have people waiting to pray with you. But I encourage you to call and receive either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To receive today's teaching and learn more about Andrew Womack Ministries, visit our website. While there, you can find more product details and discover many of Andrew's teachings. Hello, this is Andrew Womack and I just want to speak to all of you who are watching in Africa that we now have three locations in Africa where we have offices there. And the reason we've done this is just so that we can serve you better, so that you, we can get materials to you quicker, so that you can come and receive. We actually have a bookstore there in Kampala, Uganda. But we have offices in Uganda, we have offices in Zimbabwe, and also in South Africa. South Africa now has three Karis Bible Colleges, one in Cape Town, one in Heidelberg, and one in Johannesburg. And then we have our school and office in Zimbabwe, and then we also have a school and office in Kampala, Uganda. And we just encourage you to take advantage of these local uh, offices and schools because they can minister to you at a greater level. We have some information on your screen where you can get that. Also, we have uh, distance education to where you don't have to go to one of these places to actually participate with Karis Bible College. And we've got a brand new feature that we call e where you get a little iPad that has the entire first year curriculum already loaded on there. You don't even have to have an internet connection and you can just partake of Karis Bible College that way. But we love you and we believe that the Lord has opened up this door for me to minister all throughout the continent of Africa and especially if you live in one of these places where you could receive this local ministry, we encourage you to take advantage of it. Again, the information is there on your screen and we just want to be a blessing to you. We want to be God's hand extended to you and help you any way that we can. So check it out and help us to be a bigger blessing in your life. We have offices in Harare, Zimbabwe, Kampala, Uganda, and in Cape Town, Heidelberg, and Johannesburg, South Africa. Visit one of these locations, and while there, stop by our bookstore to see all of Andrew's products. We hope to hear from you today.